Welcome to the Armani Talks YouTube channel, the number one YouTube channel for you to level up your communication skills, learn the art of public speaking, social skills, and personal branding to take your message to the world. For today's episode, we're entering the world of public speaking, and I'm going to be sharing with you eight speech mistakes that a lot of public speakers are making. Here's the thing. There's no one that is born the perfect public speaker, and then there is no one that dies the perfect public speaker. But guess what? You can chase perfection anyways, because when you chase perfection in the public speaking world, you become much more mindful of what you are doing right, and you become much more mindful of what you can improve. And simply by bringing conscious awareness to what you can improve, you start second guessing yourself during practice sessions, anytime you're about to make these moves. In most fields, when you're second guessing yourself, it's not a good thing. But in the public speaking world, it's a brilliant thing because when you second guess yourself, it happens quicker and quicker and quicker to a point where eventually it melts away. That quirk disappears and now you're closer towards perfection. In today's video, I'm going to share eight common tips that you need to just bring awareness on and do your best to avoid it during practice sessions and when you are on the public speaking stage. And each time that you avoid it, you reduce your reaction time and these quirks begin to melt away. If you are ready to improve your public speaking game and become more confident on the big stage, make sure you drop a like right on below and let's get started. The first mistake is opening with an excuse. And three common excuses that I typically hear go like this. All right, guys, look, I'm very nervous, so just bear with me, okay? <coughs> All right, guys, I'm very sick, so just bear with me, okay? All right, guys, truth be told, I didn't even prepare, so just bear with me, all right? All of these three right here are excuses. And excuses are a huge mistake in the public speaking world. Imagine if you get on the plane. You get on the plane and your pilot is like, not gonna lie, passengers, I am super scared to fly this plane right now, but here it goes. How are you going to feel? You're going to feel terrified and you are not going to feel comfortable at all within the flight. And it's the same concept in the public speaking world because in this stage, you are the pilot and your audience are the passengers. So avoid being negative from the very get-go. Put some thought behind your openers. Now you may be thinking, well Armani, my voice is quivering in the beginning. I need to let them know that I'm nervous. Here's the thing, if your voice is quivering, then you need to fix your posture, you need to raise your chin, speak a little bit louder. And within 10 to 15 seconds around the speech, your quivering voice will melt away and you will be back to normal. Your audience places a lot of importance on the middle and the ending part of the speech. So maximize those two elements and they'll forget your quivering voice completely. All right, you'll be good. A few ways to open a speech. One way is to ask them to raise their hands, give them a conditional statement and then transition into the speech. Raise your hand if blah, 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 and then boom, go into the speech. Another way is to bring up a shocking statistic that your audience most likely isn't aware of that relates to your speech. So say you're talking about dogs. Did you guys know that 98% of dog owners are not only happy, but they're confident as well? Then you transition into the speech. By the way, I made up that statistic, but you get the point. And the final way is to Bring up something that's completely out of the norm that is going to relate to your speech, that shocks their system, that brings in their curiosity. Growing up, did you guys know that my nickname was Mowgli? And your audience is going to be thinking, wait, Mowgli from Jungle Book? Hmm, now what's this guy have to say? And then boom, you transition into your speech. There's a lot of different ways to open your speech, but these are just a few suggestions. Bottom line, put some thought behind your openers because they serve a huge purpose in setting the perception. Two is apologizing too much. This mistake is huge because when you're a beginner public speaker, a lot of you guys will pretend that the audience is this perfect entity, there's this divine presence that doesn't make any mistakes. And when you perfect them like that, 
what happens is you become very nervous. And when you become nervous, anytime you make a mistake, you're going to blow it way out of proportion. Whether you say certain filler words, make certain grammar mistakes, whether you momentarily forget a point, you are going to overblow your mistakes and you're going to apologize. You're just going to keep blurting out, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, so sorry. Big mistake. The reason you're apologizing so much is because you think that every single time that you say sorry, that the audience is going to become empathetic towards you. They're going to understand where you're coming from. But that's not the case. Every single time that you're saying sorry, your perception in their eyes, it's lowering and lowering and lowering. So rather than apologizing so much, just pause, insert a silence, and smile. That's it. That's all you have to do. Gather yourself, build comfort again, then boom, go ahead. The audience has no clue when you are messing up. They have no clue. And even if you mess up, act like that's what you were going for. Because earlier, I said that you were the pilot of the speech. You control the direction. When in doubt, pause, silence, smile, gather yourself, and continue. That's two. The third mistake is not recording your speeches. So when I first joined my first ever Toastmasters, I was lucky enough to join a club where they did record speeches. And that was huge because when you see yourself on tape, you're able to spot your quirks much quicker and you're able to see what you need to be eliminating. But later on, when I joined more Toastmasters, I realized that most clubs don't record the speeches. So that's when you need to take matters into your own hands. There's this thing called a phone that you could record at any time. And you wanna record your speeches because when you watch them back, you learn something new each and every single time. Professional athletes are always watching tape, so you need to as well. Public speaking is a sport. A few things to look out for is to make sure that you're not looking at the floor too much. You typically do that when you're nervous or when you're thinking. Avoid doing that. Make sure your eyes are up. Another thing to avoid is to avoid touching your neck too much, uh, crossing your palms in front of your chest too much. Instead, have your palms to the side or have them within the torso box. The torso box is a concept that I'm going to bring up in step six. Avoid swaying back and forth. Avoid having a flat face. Avoid being monotone. There's so many different things that you can look out for, but the only time you'll realize what to look out for is when you record your speeches. So make sure you take initiative on this one. The fourth mistake is to have your back facing the audience the entire time. And typically, depending on the way that your audience is structured, it's going to be segmentations involved. So the first time I had a Toastmasters icebreaker speech, my evaluator said he loved my story, he loved the characters involved, he loved the way that it was delivered, but he said that he did not make eye contact with me a single time. He did not see my face a single time because my back was facing him the entire time. That venue was a very difficult venue to present in because it was in a U shape. So I was focused on this side of the audience, but this side, I completely ignored. And here's the thing, as a public speaker, you need to take responsibility because when your audience sits in their chair, they're stagnant, they're not moving anywhere. But you as the public speaker, you're dynamic, you're the one that's moving around. In order to fix this issue, what you need to do is you need to segment the audience into three parts, left, middle, right. And once you segment this audience, your mind becomes more organized and then you need to set the intention. Look, I have to make sure I look at all three segments. It's just three, so you're not having information overload and it makes you much more mindful in the entire process. The beauty is, it doesn't matter if the audience venue is a U, a circle, a square, a pentagon, you can always segment it into three different parts. Make sure you do that. The fifth part is when you are speaking to a crowd rather than individuals. Huge mistake. The main reason that you have speech anxiety in the first place is because you are seeing a crowd rather than individual people. And that's also the same reason that you have social anxiety. 
is because you feel as though that there's this ambiguous group that is out there to get you. But they're not. It's just individuals, all right? And if you followed step four correctly, then you've already created the segments. And by segmenting the audience, now you're able to focus more on the individuals. You wanna know a secret? It's a secret between you and I. But you just need to look at three people as a beginner. One individual from the left, one individual from the middle, and one individual from the right. Find the people that are most engaged and speak directly to them. And here's the beauty. The people that you're looking at, all the people around them, right? All the people around them will think that you're looking at them as well. So you're killing multiple birds with one stone. Mega move, and this allows you to become much more personable. Rather than being this professor that is speaking in a lecture like this, you become much more personable and they feel as though they are going to resonate with you on a much deeper level. That's five. Sixth mistake is being sloppy with your palms and with your feet. And this typically happens when you are all over the place with your hand gestures or when you're just walking aimlessly on stage. Avoid. The best way to fix that is with the hands, you wanna create this imaginary box in front of your torso and keep all of your gestures within this invisible box. And anytime you're about to make a big point, it's fine to exit the box. That's how you practice your gestures. In terms of your feet, you have to realize that you're walking around the stage. That's not something that you have to do in the very beginning stages of your public speaking journey. In the beginning of your public speaking journey, if you focus on the hand gestures, the face gestures, and the tonality, you will be good to go. But if you're feeling brave anyways, then envision a triangle in your mind, project it across stage, and walk towards each point towards your own comfortable pace. Practice the gestures ahead of time because in the beginning stages, you don't have this flow yet. Practice the gestures and over time, as you have more public speaking experience, it will become ingrained within you so you don't have to put too much thought behind it. The seventh mistake is being thin-skinned. Avoid being thin-skinned because public speaking is one of these games where people without any skin in the game, they can criticize you. Imagine a fat dude that is watching his favorite boxer getting pummeled on TV. They'll be like, man, if I was him, I would be throwing more jabs and a right hook. While in reality, if you put this fat guy on a treadmill, he'll start barfing in the first 10 minutes because he's so out of shape. He's not boxing anyone. But still, he has the right to his opinion. And it's the same case with public speaking. There's going to be a lot of times where people that are not suited to give you advice are going to give you advice. And this can be a good thing because they're seeing something that even veterans aren't seeing. So it's fine, don't be too thin-skinned, take criticism and filter it. Sometimes the opinions won't mean much, but sometimes the opinions can help you propel to the next level. So take some time and learn from them. And the eighth mistake, the final mistake is complacency. Complacency is a huge mistake in the public speaking world because it, it kills your fire. And the reason that a lot of people become complacent is they, Frame the journey incorrectly from the very beginning stages. They say something like, the reason that I'm picking up public speaking is to overcome speech anxiety. Why is that incorrect? That's incorrect because it doesn't matter who you are. You could hate public speaking right now, but after giving a certain amount of speeches, eventually you are going to overcome speech anxiety. I guarantee it. But then what? What are you going to do then? What most people do is they take their foot off the gas pedal and then they quit. And later on, they feel as though that they still have the swag on the public speaking stage. And when they get called on stage a year or two later, they realize that they're terrified. It's because they weren't practicing. You need to frame your journey correctly from the very beginning stages. And the way that you do that is rather than trying to conquer speech anxiety, reach for confidence. All right, reach for confidence because with confidence, you realize that the more confident that you become, the more that you can keep becoming more and more confident. You can keep getting better and better and better. And this allows for infinite progress so you can chase your journey towards public speaking perfection. 
And these are the eight different mistakes that a lot of people are making in the public speaking world. Let's do a quick little recap. The first is opening with an excuse. Avoid this at all costs. You're setting the wrong perception from the beginning stages. Put some thought behind your openers. Two is apologizing too much. You don't need to apologize. Just be quiet, smile, gather yourself, and then recalibrate and continue. The third one is not recording your speeches. You have all the technology in the world at this point at your fingertips. Learn to leverage it. The fourth mistake is having your back facing a certain segment of the audience for the entire speech. Big mistake. Segment the audience into three parts and cycle through those three segments throughout your speech. The fifth mistake is when you are seeing a huge crowd rather than individuals. This makes for a less impactful speech style and your audience is not going to resonate with you. Segment the audience and talk to just three people. That's it. Just three people. The sixth mistake is being way too sloppy with your gestures. In the beginning of your journey, practice your gestures and do the torso box and the triangle method like I mentioned. The seventh mistake is being too thin skinned. There's going to be all types of people criticizing you. Some people have public speaking experience and some people don't. Wherever the case is, do your best to acknowledge different opinions and filter out what works and what doesn't work. And the final tip that I can give you is do not be complacent. This kills so many public speakers because they feel like they have it all figured out. You don't. You can always keep on figuring it out and make sure you set the mindset towards confidence rather than trying to conquer speech anxiety. Overcome these eight mistakes and I guarantee you, you're going to keep on improving and improving and improving in terms of public speaking swag. Public speaking is one of these skill sets that spills over to all other parts of your life. You become more convicted as a person. You have faith. You become much more charismatic in social situations. And overall, people like to listen to you because you have a nice musical voice. Public speaking is something that you can always keep on getting better at and start viewing it as a sport. For more tips into the world of public speaking, you want to check out the Armani Talks daily newsletter. Every single day at 7 p.m. EST, I drop a newsletter in storytelling format teaching you how to improve your communication skills, whether it's public speaking, storytelling, creative writing, and so much more. Go on over to the description box right on below, hit that link, and join the Level Up Tribe today. Thank you, my friend, for joining the Armani Talks YouTube channel, and I'll catch you next time.